A thing that we've been hearing quite a lot over the past couple of weeks is why do we need a Bake Off musical? I've had people who aren't really interested in musical theatre send me the marketing and the videos on social media about Bake Off and laugh it off and expect me to kind of laugh along with them, but the thing is, the Bake Off musical is actually really good. I've known for a while that it was probably going to be good. It got very good reviews out of town and I'd seen these kind of bubble up as it started to talk about coming to town. And I think the thing to remember is that bad ideas can end up good if you have a good execution. So what works about Bake Off? Is there anything that doesn't? And does this show deserve the reputation it's made for itself? But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. I've also started offering channel memberships. So if you want to get exclusive updates and exclusive videos, you can check that out by clicking the join button down below. But let's talk about Bake Off. Typically I write like three bullet points, but for Bake Off I've written a full page of notes. So um, this can be fun. So what is the Bake Off musical? The Great British Bake Off musical is about a fake season of Bake Off. I mean, that's obvious. We get the typical archetype contestants, and we go through the motions through the series. However, we start to focus a lot more on the different people there. As this show reveals itself to be less about Bake Off and more of a celebration of humanity. The second I watched it, as I got to the interval, I realised what this was. And I'm going to throw a name of a musical here that you may or may not recognise, but it is the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. That musical is about a spelling bee. However, it doesn't really focus itself too much on the spelling bee side. That's just the backdrop of it. That's just what the musical is set at. The real story is about the kids and their different tales and what's going on in their lives. And Bake Off is very similar. We get songs about these characters, little glimpses into their lives and the reasons why they are here, why they decided to go on Bake Off. These characters are a little bit stereotypical, they're mostly archetypes, but that doesn't mean they're not relatable. There's still a lot of emotion and heart within these characters, and the script does a very good job at balancing the time that you see everyone, making sure that each character gets their moment to show you who they are. What's more, I think the Bake Off musical knows exactly what it is. It knows what its reputation is. It's not trying to be high art, and look, it's not going to come on stage and be Les Mis or even Cabaret, all of these like really dark gritty musicals. The Bake Off musical is just trying to be a light bit of fun that, you know, makes you feel happy and joyful, a little bit like the TV show is there for. The TV show is reality TV. It's not there to make you really think. It's more to make you feel, or to help you pass the time, or to just give you that little bit of entertainment. And the Bake Off musical channels this with its silliness and over-the-top staging. We get a miniature motorbike riding across the front of the stage. We get a boxing fight where we see the two judges fight over which is correct, scone or scone. The start of the musical flashes back to the origins of baking, which they claim is in caveman times. It, this is just silly, it's goofy. And you can't help but have like a little chuckle over it. It embraces the campness of Bake Off. It embraces the campness of musical theatre. These two go hand in hand really, really well. It feels genuinely like Bake Off. There's a lot of really fun references in here. Bigger ones that you're going to understand even if you're not a massive Bake Off fan, like The Bin or Stolen Ice Cream, and other scandals that have happened over the time of Bake Off's run on TV that they pay homage to in the musical. And I like how a lot of these are contained within certain moments of the show. They're not the main focus, but they're baked in. I heard it as I said it. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> On the whole, I think Act 1 is a lot stronger than Act 2. Act 1, we uh, have less of a focus on the competition. We only see one person go home, and it more focuses on introducing you to the characters. Act 2 focuses a lot more on the 
movement of the competition, we see a lot more eliminations. And pacing wise, I'm not sure it works as strongly as the first act. And there's definitely some filler songs in here that could be taken out to make it flow a little bit better. But I'll get into that as we discuss the music. Bops after bops after bops after bops. They did not hesitate to make this score so good so that anyone who was saying, oh, the Bake Off musical, I don't really think that's going to be good, could not pick up this music and go, oh, hmm, actually, maybe, May maybe. <laughs> Jake Brunger and Pippa Cleary have crafted such a beautiful and cute score. It's cutesy, it's sweet. It it honestly feels like you are eating a delectable dessert. And I don't need to tell you why that is perfect for a Bake Off musical. My favourite song is towards the start of Act 1, which is uh, Obviously, which is sung by Izzy, who takes the archetype of more of the um, headstrong, sassy... I don't give a shit about anyone else but me. I'm the star, I'm the moment type character. The song is confident and boppy and so sassy and Grace Moat just sells it completely. Somewhere in the Dough is a really sweet I want song, all about confidence and the lack thereof within the character of Gemma. And knowing that there's something more that you can strive for, slap it like that is just so silly. It takes the innuendo style of Bake Off that we see a lot and just puts it into a musical number perfectly. The second you see them start to slap the dough, you realise what they're doing. <laughs> it takes you a second, but the second you realise you're like, oh, oh I see. Oh, that's what they're talking about. Actually, I really enjoy some of the slower numbers in the show. Grow is so heartfelt. My dad brought me to tears. The Bake Off musical made me cry. The Bake Off musical had no right to make me cry. And honestly, I really enjoy The Perfect Pedophiles, which is more of a... Uh, old school musical theatre inspired number. It's very uh, American in Paris inspired. This entire score is so well crafted and each character gets their own moment and gets their own song to really show you who they are. And it's a very fun and easy listen. I can see a lot of these numbers becoming very popular with auditions very soon. Especially, obviously, Rise, Somewhere in the Dough. These are probably going to end up in those long lists of drama school audition songs that you see. They have that quality to them. They're really, really strong. However, there is one number in this show that just doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And this is what I'm talking about with Pace. I'd Never Be Me Without You is a number for the two hosts, who I'm realizing now I never actually introduced. They are Dame Pam, who is obviously a reference to Prue, and Phil Hollinghurst, who is clearly a reference to Paul Hollywood. This number is fine, I guess, but where it comes in Act 2 is where the competition is starting to bubble up and we're getting really interested in it and we want to see where it's going and who's going to get eliminated and it just takes you away from the action at a point where you really want to be in it for a number that is probably the weakest thing in the score. My initial reaction was to take another song that comes a little bit later, Bab's Lament, and put that where I'd Never Be Me Without You was. But I understand that that is uh, meant to be an 11 o'clock number and also hides a big set change. You could probably just make do without I'd Never Be Me Without You. It's another number for the host that doesn't really tell you much about them. It just defines their relationship that we already kind of get in other places in the musical. It's not really a necessary number and it's not big or even fun enough to justify its placement there. Like there's other numbers in musical theatre that just, they don't do anything for the plot, but at least they're like fun or they keep you engaged. Honestly, example from this show, Babs Lament. Babs Lament comes as an 11 o'clock number. Babs is not really a big character at this point in the show. This is not really the point to give her that number, but the number is big and bombastic enough and really endears you to Babs that it kind of justifies it being there, even if it's not as justified within the script. 
get you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? I feel like you get what I'm saying. Anyway, the fact that I don't have a cast album right now is honestly uh, rude, and I want it right now. I know it is not coming out until uh, the 28th of April. How dare you? How dare you? I want this right now. <laughs> The staging of this show works really well in The No Coward. The set design is really cute. It instantly reminds you of Bake Off with the tent kind of created with different neon lights. There's a lot of projections that adds a lot of depth to this set. And there's a lot of like flashy set pieces that adds a lot of a musical theatre feel to it. The set design really does a good job at blending the theatre world with the Bake Off world. And What's more, this musical's hilarious. This musical is so funny. There's so many witty one-liners that come a lot from our hosts and our judges. And one of the funniest characters is the daughter of one of the contestants, Ben, whose name is Lily, who gets a lot of these one-liners along with uh, Scott Page, who gets my favorite line in the entire show. And even just like the costuming with the scone fight and the caveman sequence. And the quick-witted nature of the set and the innuendos that feel so perfectly Bake Off, it's so charming with its humour, and so British. It's so wonderfully British with its humour. And it also has a lot of really fun gags that kind of pop up through the show, like the first eliminated contestant who keeps trying to get back onto the show. It's so fun. And that's what I want. That's what I want in a... Bake Off musical. I just want it to be fun. Now, Bake Off is such an ensemble show that I really feel like I need to mention every single cast member because every single character in this show gets a moment to shine. I don't really feel there's a single character who I can legitimately leave off and not give some praise because every single actor does such an incredible job within this show. I'd like in it a little bit to come from a way where you do have characters who have a little bit more than others, but Every character gets their moment. Every single actor shines in a certain element. So let me go through some of the biggest ones and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna list everyone else and give them a little bit of praise because I, I'm not, I, I don't wanna leave anyone off. I don't wanna leave anyone off. Charlotte Wakefield as Gemma gives such a great underdog vibe. She's so warm and lovable. She makes her a great protagonist. And what's more, her struggles are really relatable. Scott Page and Zoe Burkett play off each other so incredibly well as the hosts. I wish that they got a stronger song to themselves or a bigger moment, but what they do get is really fun and I think they sell a lot of the one-liners together. John Owen Jones and Hayden Gwynn as Paul Ho oh my god I keep I keep going to say Paul Hollywood as Phil Hollinghurst and Pam Lee are really, really good together. <laughs> I got the names out, that's all I got to It's Paul Hollywood and Prue, come on. I think they channel their counterparts to perfection. You see Paul Hollywood in Phil Hollinghurst, like completely and utterly. The casting is so perfect. Just a round of applause to the casting director for this show because they did an incredible job. Grace Moat, Steals the show for me, as Izzy. She gets the best song in the show, obviously, and I've already given her praise for this in this video, but I feel like I need to again, because damn, that song is good, and it is sung so incredibly well by Grace. It's incredible, amazing, spectacular, never done before, never duplicated, icon, legend, the moment, Slade. Work. Get it, girl. <laughs> Yes, hello, I am Critic. I give the strong criticism. That performance was slay. <laughs> Claire Moore as Babs really shows herself off in her 11 o'clock number. And I think her character is just so sweet. She's the older character, a bit of a matriarch, a little bit the grandma of the family, and she's she's just so lovable. And there's so many other great performances. Damien Humbly as Ben, his performance alongside his daughter in My Dad is so heartfelt. As I said, made me cry. Bake Off Musical, you didn't have the right. Aaron Rayner as Hassan gets this really lovely character arc about really embracing 
his culture. And I really love his energy as the younger person in the group. His musical style in the show is a little bit more unique. And Reina does such a great job with this. You really align yourself to him and you really feel his warmth and his presence. In a similar way, Kat Sanderson as Francesca gets a very similar arc. Being an Italian who has lived in England for over a decade. And a lot of the themes that her character has with her inability to give birth are so human. And I really enjoy the pairing of her and Hassan, almost taking on a matriarch role to him. And then there's our younger cast who share the role of Lily. I didn't quite catch who I caught as Lily. I think it was Maisie Main. But because I didn't quite catch exactly who I caught, I'll give you the other names of the actresses as well. And they are Amelie Rouse and Anya Shah. Lily is such a wonderful addition to the show. Her dialogue is really funny. She has a great rapport with Gemma. And I'm really glad that they keep her presence throughout as she kind of pushes and builds upon the relationship building between Gemma and Ben. And finally, there is the character of Deza, played by Jay Segal. His running gag throughout the show is hilarious. It, it, it's so funny. It kills me every single time. He doesn't get a big song or a big moment to himself, but every time you see him pop up, you are so glad for it. Just, just, I, I just love this cast. This cast is so good. There isn't a weak person within this cast. The Bake Off musical didn't need to be made. It didn't need to be made. But the fact that it's been made and been made this well is incredible. It's fun. It's sweet. It's it's a hug. It's a hugger musical. And sometimes you want that. Sometimes you just want a night of entertainment that's going to make you feel uplifted. Not every musical needs to be hard hitting or the greatest thing ever made. Sometimes you need the Great British Bake Off musical. Just like sometimes after a long day of work, you need to sit down and get excited about the next episode of Bake Off airing. That's what the show is all about. The TV show itself. And the musical channels that really well. So, did we need a Bake Off musical? No. But am I so glad that we got what we have? Yes. But, what do you think? Are you sceptical about the Bake Off musical? Have you seen it? What did you think? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me and helps out the channel. There's some links to some other videos on stream right now and a link to my Instagram where you can drop me a follow there. And remember that you can join channel memberships if you want to go above and beyond to support the channel. I would really appreciate it. But that's it for me today and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!